Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. Today we answer the question, 500 leads or 25 prospects? Let me tell you something. I'm excited to bring you insights and information I shared. Hey, we got a great audience that's joining us. Comments open, by all means. Throw your comments in, throw your questions in, because what I'm going to be sharing with you today is a lot of information, not information, comments that people shared with me when I posted this question. Okay, what do I mean by that? Some of you may not be have heard what I did. A couple of weeks ago, I posted the question, which would you rather have, 500 leads or 25 prospects? Now, I posted that because I, in my Sales Hunter University master classes, one of the things we talk about is how do you have a great pipeline? I've got a great pipeline course out there right now. You can go ahead and grab it if you want. But one of the things that I really wanted to know was what is it that people want the most of? What is it? Well, what do they want? Hey, we got we got Croatia in the house already. If you got questions, you got comments, throw them in here because we want to hear. And hey, chime in with where you're from. Bonnie's with the show. Hello from Canada. Great to have you with us today. Here's the deal. I posed this question on LinkedIn and I thought I'd get a few comments. Well, let me tell you something. We had over 150,000 views of the post really asking the question, which would you rather have 500 leads or 25 prospects? We had 150,000 views. We had well over 300 people vote vote. And here's what we came up with. In fact, actually, I think it was more than that. Yeah, we had 3,000 people vote. I'm sorry, 3,185 people vote. And more importantly, we had 120 comments. Now, look at this. This is what's interesting. 88% of the people who voted, 88% of 3,185 people voting said they'd rather have 25 prospects, okay, versus 500 leads. Okay, now that's interesting, but this is what's interesting. This is 88 to 12, but the comments, the 120 comments. Now, I went through all 120 comments. I'm going to share a number of them right here. I'm, I'm going to share a number of them here in just a bit. Here's what's very interesting. Here's what's very interesting. The comments were 56% in favor of 500 leads. In other words, the people who are passionate about leads, they're passionate. They are passionate. That was 56% of the comments and 44% were in favor of prospects. Now, not all 120 could be evaluated because they were neutral. So we only took and measured those that were, and it was about, about I think it was about 38% of the comments actually could we wait one way or the other now stop and think about this for a moment what does this tell us there's a passionate group out there that says leads and there's a passionate group out there that says prospects so this begs us the question is this really an art or a science in other words what 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 does this all come down to now i'm going to go through and i'm going to share with you a number of comments from people that they posted and in this I'm going to um, add my commentary. And at the end, I'm going to answer for you, what do I think it is? Do I think it's more important to have 500 leads or 25 prospects? Are you ready to get into it? First person, let me pull up Jason Bay. Now, if you if you want to, you can go out to my post and you can you can read all of these. But Jason Bay says, hey, I'd much rather have 500 leads because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into Sales Navigator and I'm going to see who I can begin to flush out and and who are the ones that are going to be my A priorities. I like that. He's going he's going to take his A priorities. Then he's going to take others and, okay, they're maybe not quite, but they're his B priorities. And then everything else goes into his marketing funnel. Jason, you know what's interesting? This is very similar to, to my strategy. Very, very similar. Leads come in and they have, to, they have to become qualified to become prospects. So Jason 
I give you a lot of credit. Now, Jason couldn't join us on this, this show day because he had another commitment, but I reached out to him specifically because I like his approach because what he's saying is that, hey, leads are leads, but I got to qualify them. I got to qualify them. Yes, yes. Now, hey, Jeff says, go Jason Bay. Love using Navigator for prioritizing your list. Right, this, this is one of the key things. Now, here's something to keep in mind though. We are all watching the show right now, the vast majority of us on LinkedIn. Okay, so we're on LinkedIn. Some of us are watching the show by way of YouTube and some might by way of Facebook. But here's the whole thing. If we're all on LinkedIn, that means we think the world is on LinkedIn. There's a lot of industries where people are not on LinkedIn. They're just not on LinkedIn. No, they don't care about LinkedIn. See, so depending upon your industry, depending on who you're prospecting, LinkedIn may or, LinkedIn Navigator may or may not be. But I know in my world, the majority of the industries I work with, they're on LinkedIn and it can work. Now, before you say, Mark, I, I don't get it. Isn't everybody on LinkedIn? Think about this. If you're a purchasing agent, would you want to be on LinkedIn? No, you wouldn't want to be on LinkedIn. If you're a CEO, would you want to be on LinkedIn? Sure, you're going to be on LinkedIn, but are you going to be active on LinkedIn? No. You're going to have a profile, but you're, you're not You're not going to be active on LinkedIn. You see, what am I saying here is just because we're on LinkedIn and probably we're active on LinkedIn doesn't mean everyone is. What does this come down to as far as what Jason's talking about? Before I do that, let me pop up a couple of comments. We have Egypt in the house. Good afternoon. Great. To, I should say good evening because it's good evening for you. And Bonnie asked the question, do you recommend to hire independent sale, internal sales agents? Yes, I do, depending on the company, depending on the organization. And I'll kind of add some commentary to that when we get down towards the end here. Here's the piece. What is Jason talking about? Rinse and repeat. Rinse and re see, this is what's so critical because you got to rinse your lead list. You got to rinse your lead list to see which ones, which ones are good. And then when you get going, you've got to stay dialed in focused. And this is where too many people fall apart. What they do is they get these leads and then they just kind of sort through them and, okay, here's this, but they really don't have a process to go after it. Jason's got a process. Next comment that I pulled comes from Jack Hubbard. Jack Hubbard's in a terrific individual. He deals in banking. And he raises a great point. He says, bankers, for instance, here's the problem. They don't have enough time. They don't have enough time. So he's saying, hey, I'm going to take the 25. I'm going to take the 25 prospects by all means, because I don't have time to deal with all that. Yes, it is. You see, this is the challenge here. I can sit here and I can come up with all kinds of leads. But do I have the ability to work with them? This is the biggest problem that salespeople have. And Jack is calling it out right here because the typical banker, he deals in financial institutions. They're constrained because they're dealing with so many other pieces out there. Hey, Michael, great to have you in the house from LA. Yeah, I've, I've been looking. You know what? You might say you've been looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this, con with, to this conversation too because it was absolutely a, a trip to go through and read all 120. Now, stop and think about this for a moment. How much time do you really have to manage your prospects and your leads? Some of you may not even have enough time to literally just handle your prospects, let alone get into leads. Here's a great comment. What about ROI on your time to qualify all those leads? Sift through all those tire kickers. You bet that is the big challenge, right? Because I can spend all day and see what you bring up is a great point. You see, our greatest asset is our time. We've got you, you, this perfect timing on this. Yeah, you see, here's the whole thing. What about the ROI? Now, Michael chimes in here. Great, great. I have issues with the I don't have time objective because it's a matter of time management more than we usually think it is. Spot on. You're right. This, this is spot on. This is one of the key things because what happens is people don't want to prospect, so they make excuses as to why they don't have time to prospect. This is absolutely key. Absolutely key. Now, what does this mean? You've got to really understand 
what are your requirements and what are not your requirements. Now, in the case of Jack Hubbard, where he was talking about banking, these people, loan officers and so forth, they're assigned with a very specific set of responsibilities. See, so they have to, they have to. But for a lot of salespeople, they don't have to. You see, so it comes down to, Michael, you're spot on. You have to have the commitment. And again, I'm going to share with you some more comments on this that, that, I, that I hopefully will, will uh, shed some more light on, on, on this. But keep the questions, keep the comments coming because I'll keep popping them up on the screen here. Because your greatest asset your time. Now, let's look at this other comment. Here's another comment, and I apologize. I, I, can't quite, I can't read that on the screen behind me. Let me pull it up here. Bear with me for just a moment here. Um, comes from Chris. He says, you need to think about what you can realistically do justice to. See, Michael, this kind of comes back to what you're talking about. 25 leads would soak up a bit, a, a far bit time, but would you need a team of people to deal with 500 leads? See, now what, what this is talking about here is this whole premise that I got to understand what can I handle and what is my lead qualification process like? For some companies, for some people who sell, lead qualification isn't that stringent because the product they're selling applies to everybody. Absolutely applies to everybody. For instance, if I'm if I'm uh, business to consumer and I'm selling pest control in a hot, muggy climate, I can pretty much target almost anybody who owns a home, right? I, I, that, see, so my criteria is not as stringent. If on the other hand, what I'm selling only applies to a very, very thin slice of people and they only buy once every 10 years, then, mm, then I probably can't handle 500 leads. Hey, Patrick chimes in here with a great from Chelmsford. I've got over 300 overdue tasks and struggling to keep up as I'm out on the road a lot. Right. See, so, so what you have to do, Patrick, is you have to say, okay, what is the amount of time? Now you got 300 overdue tasks. My pushback to you right now would be, okay, 300 overdue tasks, but will they still be overdue tomorrow? And, and will the earth start rotate? Will the earth stop rotating? No. See, sometimes what happens is we look at overdue tasks and I've got a lot of things I haven't gotten to, but I'm not worried about it because it's not going to change the course of mankind tomorrow. Now, there may be others that I've got to zero in, focus in on right now. Those, yeah, yeah. So what I've got to do, Patrick, is I've got to sit here and comes back to your question, Michael, in terms of, you know, hey, uh, I don't have time objection. Are we scheduling time to be prospecting? Let me get this one other question up here. Does the purchase decision time make a difference in between leads versus prospect? Yes, by all means. See, how long is the sales cycle? How long or how short is the sales cycle? This is this is one of the key things. This is, see, see, if I have a short sales cycle and it only takes one or two touches, I'm going to much rather go for 500 leads. But if I have a long sales cycle, and I might have to have 8, 10, 12 meetings to get this because it's such a complex sale, then that's a, a, a different job completely in terms of uh, I'm going to zero in on prospects. Here's a great way. Hey, everyone, hiring a qualified team can help you with 300 overdue tasks. Yeah, by all means. You see, maybe there are things on your on your plate, you know, you know Patrick, that you say, I've got to get off my plate. I just recently, uh, not recently, about eight or nine months ago, I expanded the size of my company and I added people to my company to get things off my plate. Now, I, I, I get it. You may not be in, be in that position, but let's come back to this whole piece here in, in terms of what he's raising it yet. You, you know, what can I realistically do justice to? Well, what it comes down to is this. Don't start what you can't finish. I love this picture of this burger. I love burgers. This is like a triple burger with cheese, onions, bacon. It's got everything on there. But let me tell you something. I don't care how hungry I am. I could start this, but I probably couldn't finish it. I couldn't finish it. There's no way. There's no way I could finish it. So what I want to sit here and do 
is I got to sit there and say, I could only start, and this comes back to the short sales cycle versus the long sales cycle. If it's a short sales cycle, I can start more people because I can move them through quickly. If on the other hand, it's a long sales cycle, it's going to be, you know, enterprise sales. I was working this morning with a company where we're dealing with enterprise sales. And even in the best of times, it's going to take us probably nine to 10 months to close a big deal. So the account managers were saying, hold it. Just, you know, how many can I actually handle? Hey, great comment. Evening, Mark. Great to have you with us. Michael chimes back in. Keep, keep it coming. A sales cycle time spread doesn't have to matter if you can get leads started. That's a pipeline. Totally agree. Totally agree. As long as you can keep them moving. As long as you can keep, if, if, if I get them started, but I can't objectively move them through, then I wind up with a sewer pipe. So there's a, there, there's a balance because here's what I found. All salespeople have an ability to handle so much. Now I'm always in favor of stretching it. It's kind of like running, you know, you, you start out running and maybe you can only run a hundred meters, hundred yards. You, you run a couple of days and you're in 200 meters, 300 meters, and you get stronger and stronger. So I, I agree. We can handle bigger pipelines as we go. The other piece that affects the size of the pipeline is how tight we are with our ICP. The tighter our ICP, the more effectively we can sit here and manage more people in our pipeline because the communication of information is going to be more consistent and similar ac across the path. Spot on. Great question there. Bonnie jumps back in. I am leveraging Fiverr to outsource until I can hire a city employee. Yeah, you're right. There are other tools out there. Now, here's, here's what I'll, I'll argue. Be careful when we look at outsourcing sales help because it's, it's easy to kind of go for the low cost solution. And it winds up costing you more because it's very hard to really sell. It, 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 it really is, you know, unless you're selling pencils or, or, or something so common, uh, it can be hard. So you got to be careful there. Yes. Hey, hiring a steady employee, you can check with us. There we go. Hey, we're connecting people right here online on LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. This is, this is great. Patrick jumps in. Thanks. We're, we're a very small team and need to grow revenue more before hiring. Right. See, you kind of earn your way into hiring. I'll always say this, and I'll jump back on track here in terms of, don't just hire and then think you can grow because hiring in and of itself creates problems. I got to make sure that I have a valid process, a proven process before I start putting more people into, into the sales plan. I work with a lot of companies that have over the years hired a lot of people. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to add 30, 40, 50 more people but they don't have a process. You got to have that process. That process has got to be there. Hey, Bonnie jumps back in here. Wow. We got a lot of comments that are popping up. She says, thanks. I'm not there yet, but you know what? Keep in touch. Here we go. Here's another one. Thanks. You can still keep our details for future references. I love, we got, we got conversations going on here. Now come back to this. Don't start what you can't finish. You see, here's the deal. I'm going to put into my pipeline what I can actually handle. Now let's jump to the next comment. And I like this. This comes from Marissa G. Marissa G says, I would hands down take the 500 leads. I would think Marissa is in the same camp with Michael. You bet. I'll take the 500 leads, then 25 great prospects. I'm confident that I could turn more than 25 prospects into customers. I love that attitude. I love that attitude. I love it. Why do I love that attitude? Because undoubtedly, Marissa is confident enough with her sales process. She's confident with her lead. She's confident with how she works. Now, what does that mean? She owns it. She owns it. One of the key things that you have to look for in any salesperson is do they own their sales process? And let me tell you something. If you don't own your sales process, you have, you have got a serious problem because then what will happen is you're going to wind up being buffeted back and forth. One day you're going to be chasing leads. One day you're going to be one day you're going to be chasing um, prospects. And Marissa G is confident and she owns it. She's zeroed in and she's focused. This is absolutely key. 
again, criteria I'll, I'll ask is what's the si what what is the what is the sales cycle? What are the number of touches it takes? What is the bandwidth that you can handle? Yeah, it's great. We've got this conversation that's going on here. I love it how people are saying, hey, we're going to stay in touch. Again, that's one of the things about this whole piece because sales is not a solo activity. Sales is a team sport. We've got some great people on the team. Let's jump, let's jump to the next one now. Now, I can't pronounce this gentleman's name, so I apologize. But he says, what's your definition of a lead? What is your definition of a lead? And he says his company has three different measurements of leads. I love that. I love that because not all leads are created equal. And they go through and they weight their leads differently. Again, great strategy for you to look at. Now, is this a strategy that individual sales, if you're a solo salesperson, you should undertake? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I really don't think unless you don't get many leads. Because again, what you can do is you can become over inundated with your process and your process begins controlling you instead of you controlling your process. If, however, you have a larger sales team and you have a marketing team and you have resources, this is an absolute, this is an absolute key thing. You see, what is this all about? This is all about, I don't want to be a rain barrel. I want to be a rain maker. Now, this is one of the challenges that I find so many times with salespeople. They want leads. They want a lot of leads because they're just hoping that some of those leads turn into business. See, they're being a rain barrel. You want to ask yourself, am I pushing myself enough to where I'm a rain maker? If you're not, if you're not a rain maker, you're not in sales. Stop and think about that for a moment. If, if, if you're not a rain maker, you're not in sales. You're in customer service. Michael jumps in here. If I were new to sales or unsure, I'd easily snap up to 25 good prospects. Spot on. Totally agree with him. You're right. Right. It's the long timer workhorses who can own the 500. Very well said. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Because the five, because the veteran, the long timer, should know how to manage that in their process, should know how to handle all that. And that makes them a better rainmaker. Because initially, 25 prospects, I'm closer to a rain barrel, depending on my close ratio. Because again, you may have a 25 great prospects. But depending again on what you sell and so forth, they may not always be perfect perfect customers and the close ratio might be low which brings up the point what should your what should your close ratio be of qualified prospects i say it should be if i'm at the point of putting proposals across the table i should be closing 65 percent of my deals 65 percent of my deals yeah now i get too much above that and i'm not i'm not putting enough deals across the table if I'm lower than that, then what I'm doing is I'm racing to the to the proposal state too soon. So 65 is kind of my norm, and it's going to vary by industry. It 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 it's it's going to vary, but 65 tends to be a pretty good number. Now let's go to the next comment. Next comment here, and this is a this is a great comment. I I, I love this comment, and it comes from Ram Rambo Marty. He says, why should I have more leads if I can ha have fewer qualified prospects? He says, sales is not just about the numbers. It's also about being effective and productive. Hmm. We all have time and resource limitations. Go for less to get more. Now, think about what he said. Now, th this is kind of interesting because he's countering a little bit of what you were talking about, Michael, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I love divergence of opinions because he's saying maybe I go for less to get more because I think what he's saying is this. If I spend more time, and this is something I talk about, if I spend more time with fewer prospects, I create better value and I can command a higher price. See, what he's really talking about here is what I call CFT, customer-facing time. What he's saying is, is I want to have maximum 
customer time, customer facing time. But if I can do it with fewer prospects, fewer people, I can probably create more value. And he's saying, hmm, could I do that with 500? He could do it with 500 unless he went back and used the Jason Bay approach or some of these other approaches in terms of qualify to get those 500 down to 35 or 40 or 50 or whatever he could manage. You're right. Yeah. Now, the value in having leads is that I can put them into other types of funnels. I can put them into marketing. I have a marketing funnel, for instance. And, and these are these are leads that came in. They don't qualify. They just don't work for me as a customer. Uh, they're not going to be a customer. But I can put them into my marketing funnel. And somewhere down the road, something might change. Let's go to the next comment. Randall. Randall sends, a, sends in a great comment. Let's assume that you only convert 10% of the above numbers. Well, and he uses kind of the baseball analogy. I'm playing the odds. I'm absolutely playing the odds. Now, see, this comes right back into Randall, what, or excuse me, Michael, what you were talking about. I'm going to play the odds and I'm going to have more. Now, here's a great comment right now. Bill Walton jumps in, not Bill Walton, the basketball player. He says, I'm in a position that if it's the fourth quarter, and I'm taking the prospects because I want to make sure I make my number. So he says, hey, because of the calendar, because of the end of the year, I've got to be more focused on making my number so I don't have as much time to spend up here in leads and I've got to be closing more deals. Now, what do I like about both these comments? What I like about both these comments is, is excuse me, I said it was Randall. It's Kendall. I'm sorry. It's Kendall. Kendall, Kendall made the comment of, of, of really the odds. What are the mathematical odds of me being able to close? And again, this is understanding what is my sale, what is my sales process? What are my statistical, what's my historical norms? And then Bill says, hey, fourth quarter, I've got a zero in. What does this remind me of? This reminds me of know your goals. What are your goals? And if you don't know what your goals are, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Yeah. We got some more questions that, that have popped in. Um, I understand that hiring a team as a startup will cost a lot. What I can say is to hire an offshore team that will provide you a cost. Yeah. See, there, there are multiple. One of the challenges I think everybody in sales has, and what we've talked about here, is there's a cost of sales. There is a cost of sales. And what we have to do is we have to understand how do we optimize our cost of sales? Yeah. How do we optimize it? That is, that is, that's a real challenge. And when we talk about optimizing, it's optimizing it from the sales time standpoint and from the lead standpoint. Because one of the challenges I'll raise, and I'm going to get to this answer here in terms of what are we doing from sales? But here's what I want you to ask yourself. If we can't be passionate about sales, then we can't be passionate about helping others. You see, I'm going to answer the question 500 versus 25 from my perspective in just a second. But I got to set this up for you for one very simple reason. If we can't be passionate about sales, we can't be passionate about helping others. See, whether or not you're into leads or whether or not you're into prospects, about being passionate about people. And what I find is this, when people are not passionate, they revert to two things. They revert to rain barrel and they revert to just playing the numbers. Well, I made my 25 calls. Well, I made this, I made this, I made this. Yeah, yeah. Be very, very careful. You have to be very, very careful in that one. Yeah. Now, let's answer this question. 500 leads, 25 prospects. What is the answer, Mark? What is the answer from what you say? First of all, I want to thank all 120 people who have chimed in, the 150,000 people who viewed that post, and the over 3,100 who voted. Here's what I'll challenge you with is this. In order to answer the question, 500 leads versus 25 prospects, you have to first answer these questions. One, 
How many deals do I need to close a month? How many deals? Two, what is the length of time it takes for me to close a deal? In other words, what's the sales cycle? Three, how much time and resources do I have with which to sell? Those are the three questions you have to answer. Now, every one of those three questions is totally variable. Let me give you some examples. I was working with an architectural firm. And they only needed, because they do commercial work, they only need to win two bids a month. They And, and, and they don't even participate in bids. They, they, I, I sh should say that's a false. They only want two contracts a month. And they don't participate in bids. Two contracts a month. That's it. But it can take a year for them to get that contract. And the people they have working on it are project managers and lead engineers. And what they know is that they can only handle about 50 to 75 leads per person. That's it. They get above, they get above 100, they, they just can't handle it. They just can't handle it. The optimal is about 50 to 75. And it works very, very comfortably. And then they could close generally because they have three people who are selling each one really only needs to close about one contract per month they close one contract per month they close three that's more than enough business for them same so basically their number is really quite small because of the length of time on the other hand i was talking the other day with a company that is basically in the distribution of industrial supplies very short sales cycle very short and we were i was telling them that every one of your salespeople needs to have 1000 leads that they're working with 1000 leads that they're working with because they're expected to get 8 to 10 deals per day per salesperson so if if they have a thousand and it's a repetition game they have to be making about 100 calls a day they're making about 100 calls a day so that means every two weeks, I'm working my way through my 1,000 list. Every two weeks. I want to keep 1,000 leads in mind. And because their average sale is quite low, it, you know, it's great. The other piece that works in their favor is because once they get the sale, they hand it off to somebody that goes over to customer service and they take care of the relationship, the customer relationship from that point on. See, because this comes back to this whole thing of how much time do I have? Because if I can only handle a couple deals a month, can't do it. Now, in my own business, in my own business, we have we have names, we have thousands and thousands of names. But at any one time, I am only myself. I'm only dealing with about thirty leads. That's it. That's all I am dealing with. Because when we close a deal, it is of substantial size because of the type of consulting we deal, we do. And the boutique nature or the keynote speaking we do. You know, it, it, it's a very boutique type of work. Now, you might be saying, oh, Mark, we're a member of your, the Sales Hunter University Online. That's a separate piece. I mean, that's kind of a separate piece. But what I'm talking about here is my true sales in terms of my sales process. So, so we have a very tight but I'll work these people. I'll work these. I'll work these people. These companies, quite rigorously, for a couple of months, and then I'll move them over to another list. And I only really am talking with them every quarter. And I put new people in there, so I'm constantly moving people in and out. So what is it? Five hundred leads, twenty-five prospects. It comes down to the number of deals you need to close per month or per quarter, however you want to look at it. Two, the length of the sales cycle. How many contacts does it take to close a deal? And three, and, and three, what is the total bandwidth that you and your sales organization can handle? Let's talk about outsourcing. Does outsourcing work? Yes. Outsourcing works very well in terms of lead qualification. I am not a fan of outsourcing to actually closing deals unless you can very tightly define it. In my own organization, I have an individual who helps close deals. 
that are keynote speaking engagements and she does a magnificent job. But in terms of my consultant, because it's so strange, it's so bizarre. I'm actually the one that has to do that. It's just, it just, it just, because each thing is so unique. Where am I going with this? I'm going with this very simply. Sales is not a job. Sales is not a profession. Sales is a lifestyle. I love sales because I'm helping others see and achieve what we didn't think was possible. I've got a favor to ask of you. I've got a real big favor. I want you to check out the Sales Hunter University. Go out to my website. Go out to my website. You'll see it. University. I want you to check it out because that's how this, this poll came. Because I, my mind was, my mind was, was, was wondering, what's the, what do people say? I know what I say. I know what I talk about in my online program. But we put out a new online program every month. Every month there's a new master class. And if you're at the level three, you've got several people who are on the call here now who are level three members. I recognize you. I recognize your names. And, and what does that mean? They get, they get access to everything. When you get access to everything, what is it you get? You get, you get. Um, all the master classes, you receive open office hours. In other words, you can call me. We have open times where I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk to people. You get access to the whole video library. You get access to a ton of scripts and content. You receive the weekly sales kickoff videos and you get to participate in coaching calls. And there's an online group. Yeah. Bonnie David's jumping in saying it's great. Yeah. She's one of the three people I recognize um, who are level three members. Check it out. It is absolutely well worth it. Here's the deal. I have one mission. I want to see you become a great salesperson. That's why I'm putting my website up there. I'm putting my email up there and that's my phone number. And you call me, I answer it. I answer the phone. Yes, I do. If I don't answer the phone, it's only because I'm on the phone with somebody else. Okay. I'll get back to you. Sales is not a solo activity. Sales is a team sport. My goal, one goal, to help you be the best salesperson you can. Hey, hopefully I shed some light that help you see prospects or leads. Hey, and if nothing else, follow me on LinkedIn, would you? Make sure you follow me on LinkedIn. Because in fact, we just put another poll out there because I love reading the commentary. Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Center. And oh, by the way, catch me Thursday. Catch me Thursday because I'm going to be doing another uh, one of these sessions Thursday afternoon, I believe at two o'clock central time on a little different topic. We're going to be talking about the sales pipeline. Great selling.